Hi, this is uh, Andrew Romain from Peach Lug, and this is our city display that we've put together. And um, one of the one of the things I really appreciate about this display is I had first built this bridge and highway interchange four years ago, but it was just kind of a standalone model, and so. I, I really, I've, since then we've done it a lot more with these city displays and I really, I, it, it benefits a lot from having a context and being a part of, of something else. And since that first time I have added the cable state bridge over here and then a large construction area. So, so let's maybe start at this end and we'll kind of make our way okay, through that. Okay, great. So um, one of our group favorites and crowd favorites over here is basically a representation of the big chicken in Marietta, Georgia. Anybody who's been around there knows they do all the driving directions from that landmark. And this is one that an, um, one of our builders has done. And he actually, unfortunately, the motor's not working now, but it does have the eyes would spin and the beak would move just like the, the real thing. So um, I like the colonel with the minifig head on there in the name. Um, we've got a Waffle House under construction. Uh, Obviously an iconic institution. Yeah, yeah one, of, one of our uh, great builders, Chris Giddens, who's done a lot with Moonbase and stuff, but he has his wa he loved Waffle House. So yeah, Waffle House ambassador? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. I'm sure he could probably make a little money off of them. <laughs> um, we've got the Asian Bistro, Matthew Gunning, who's done a few great architectural builds. He's, he's done that. Um, and these two bars over here. We've got a biker bar. And everything. And then, how about the bridge here, which we'll see more of later? But well, the the bridge is loosely based on a couple of the bridges in Savannah, Georgia, and Brunswick, Georgia. Um, just the the cable stayed variety, and the cables act well. They're not Lego, but they are um, they are actually load bearing that uh, to be made self supporting. So it's not just for the aesthetics; it's actually functionally can support the lot wide span over the water. Um, That's fantastic, and it looks amazing. You've got lots of vehicles on there, so it's very yeah, heavily populated. Like the, um, the um, Black Panther fighter flying overhead. I always like flying things in models. So It gives that 3D element to it. Yeah, definitely. So we'll make our cell, or move our, our way across the water here. We've got these very colorful buildings here. Yeah, these are the, um, Matthew Gunning did these amazing representations of the painted ladies, these Victorian houses in San Francisco that he's done, and they kind of are stepped up a hill. But the, the he does some great architectural details in his builds, both front and back, and obviously the variety of colors. I mean, the colors are, it is actually that colorful. You know, he didn't really embellish at all the, you know, the, what the, those look like. You'll see on pretty much any San Francisco postcard, you'll see these, uh, these Victorians there. Lego is great for capturing architectural elements that are very colorful like that. Oh, yeah, definitely. So beyond that, what do we have as we move uh, towards the junction area? Well, um, we've got this uh, got this nice uh, little fountain over here. We've got uh, a little little street scene here in a bank. Um, we've got one of our one of our newer builders, uh, Yvette Boyd, who'd done a few other things here. This is a, a working farm, and she does some amazing tree work, as you may as you may be able to tell. And again, just some of the some of the nice little details in there. I love all the farm animals she's got out here. The, the classic red look. Yeah, got a little Winnebago sitting in the front here. And one of the things that, um, as we move over to the interchange, one of the things I've been trying to add to make it a little more exciting is with some different iconic vehicles that we have. Like I've tried to recreate to a certain extent. We've got the, from the National Lampoon Vacation, um, we got the uh, wagon queen going on right here. We've got um, you know Lightning McQueen. We've got uh, you know Ghost Rider. Just some different fun vehicles in in the layout and some you know different different activities going on with that. So then talk about the the junction and how this comes together because obviously just like a lot of real world road systems, there's different layers here, so it's very complex and you've got a lot of overlapping. 
Yeah, I mean, and this was one, again, being able to use some of the older parts, these racetrack pieces from the early 2000s, and obviously you can tell the switch over from the old dark gray to the new dark gray that they use on those pieces, but these, these did work out well for the, for the highway ramps crossing over. One thing I love is your street signs as well. So you've got Billund, and you've got exits to Enfield and Ninjago City. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've done that certainly with the numbers for anybody who looks up like the different years that those represent. Those are all important years in Lego history that I've used for the signs. And being a, being a civil engineer definitely helps. I do have access to the software that they do real live road signs with. So that was how I did the signs there. And then the, I've got the different electronic signs as well. Just, again, some references from a couple of the Lego movies just to make it fun. No, oh, that's a ton of fun. So we'll keep going around the corner and look at some of these buildings then. Yeah, we've got some townhouses here. And this, um, this one at the corner is actually one of um, Birmingham's iconic building, the Newspaper Herald building. It's another Matthew Gunning creation. Um, and again, he, he just loves going around the country taking pictures and doing recreating some nice architecture. So he's definitely a great asset to the lug as far as the builds that he's, that he's done and accomplished. Um, let's see, we've got the, the wheat staff next to it. It's an old English pub. I love the color schemes on these buildings. They're really great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And just the, you know, I mean, it's always with the architecture. It's always one of those things with really clever parts usage to, to get different effects. I'm always, I'm always impressed with those intricate details that, that can get done on some of these buildings. And, and then, some more highway here. Yeah, we've got some more highway. We've got another one of my, this is one of my favorite um, sort of movie tie-in builds. We've got the Mutz Cuts um, van from Dumb and Dumber with uh, Lloyd and Harry sitting in front on their merry way. Do people recognize some of these vehicles? Yeah, yeah there have been people who have who've popped up and, 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 said, and said that. So, so yeah, again, I, I, it's one of those things I want to keep adding more and more just fun things because it's basically it's a boring highway if, if you think about it so just to kind of add some interesting scenes and just things to to make it fun is, is kind of my goal with it and one thing people might notice as we've walked around you've got the train as well so not only all these levels of bridge and road and highway but then the trains run underneath yeah, it I mean that's always something I'd wanted to incorporate even when I built it without that that I knew okay it needs to have enough clearance for the trains to to get underneath and go all the way around as part of this layout. Now, this is probably the most popular section right here, the Spider-Man multiverse. And this is from um, Jacob Giddens. He's a 16-year-old son of uh, Chris. And you can tell he's an amazing builder in his own right at that age. Um, just being able, you can see he's taken the Daily Bugle set and kind of turned it into this kind of destruction, ma major um, superhero action going on with all these things. and the car crash and Sandman falling on the, the bottom and everything. It's just, it's, it's a really impressive, just a lot of action going on, on in here and just, um, just the excitement and, you know, everybody, the kids and adults all love it. So he, I do too. He captures the sense of movement really well with oh, all yeah. of the different action going on. Oh, yeah. So you can imagine this playing out in a Spider-Man movie. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And there's so many characters here and like the vehicles being flipped over and then uh, you know, different sort of like movie scenes represented as well. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So then beyond that, what else do we have here? Okay, we got um, Druce has his car dealership over here. Um, you always need, for all the cars that are out here, somebody needs to buy them. Um, so next to that, we've got the, um, these are some re recreations from some old San Juan, Puerto Rico buildings. Uh, another Matthew Gunning uh, creation. And again, just a lot of the, the vibrant colors and you know, you can even see the Puerto Rican flag and, and the palm trees. So it, it, do, it does really, again, capture something, something a little bit different in there. Behind all of that, it's not a highway without a lot of construction going on. So it looks oh, like you've yeah. got like a, 
an overpass going over and then cones kind of directing traffic? Yeah, I mean, anybody who's um, from this area or Atlanta or really any part of the country can relate to seeing a sea of, of orange traffic bar barrels and, of course, the lines of traffic getting through here. And then I wanted to recreate as well kind of a scene of a bridge actually being built because there are a lot of people who may not know what goes into that. And I've had the fortune of being able to actually work on, on construction sites and, and scenes. So they have the bridge deck finishers out there with the concrete pumping truck with its big arm reaching onto it. You can see those net pieces. That's actually supposed to be the, the steel rebar underneath and then the um, them basically smoothing out behind there to have people with their big trowels smoothing out the new uh, concrete surface as it goes in. So again, I want to create some of that with the construction vehicles in the background and um, yeah, just just all, all the little little things with that. So that's actually an, another new part to this, this build that um, even though Brick Fair has that theme of construction, I do plan to keep this as a permanent part of the the highway layout because again it just adds a lot more dynamism to to a boring old highway just to you know make make it something exciting you've got a couple of the build bulldozers um, building the new um, embankment for the for the bridge the approach to the bridge even having worked in that industry you realize highways might not be the most exciting thing to everyone <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but again, if a lot of people kind of can take for granted what it what it takes to get on the things that we we drive on every day, and and again, I think it's something else. I'm going to continue to add more scenes, maybe of the of a lot of the different um, types of construction that go on. Maybe like it wouldn't all happen at, at one time in real life. It might happen over six months to a year, but I I do plan to add some some additional sort of steps like I'd like to have a highway an asphalt paving crew out there you know pouring that you know maybe having like a pile driver to put the the supports down that go underneath the bridge a few things like that just to show people some of the different aspects and what all the all this um, you know the ex these exciting kinds of transportation uh, construction vehicles actually do and how they function so almost kind of like a little, little bit of education as well as some interest the layout. So those are things again that'll come down the road. Sure. <laughs> down the road. <laughs> Fantastic. So let, we'll move towards the end of the layout yeah. here then and what do we have going on in this well, section? We've got a couple more builds from um, Yvette Boyd. We have a schoolhouse over here um, and then we've got a little a park over here with a birthday party going on. Um, Again, just uh, some sort of things to more humanize the model, and, and again, just ma make it uh, make it really, really fun. And it's very lived in. Yeah, exa exactly, exactly. I think it's a great build. We've uh, let's see. We, one of the things um, that that really pops out over over at the corner here. Um, well, we've got this um, hotel over here with um, Trisha, one of our other. Um, builders who's always bringing some cool stuff and then um, the big pink you can see over here this is a Matthew Gunning creation the bubblegum company and um, it just it just has that sort of fun thing I think he really started with making a pink building and then like what would be something appropriate for that but I I do love the figure that he's he's built on there it's it's just an amazing like live livelihood of a of a factory just with with that picture you've got a little the little space balls rv parked out in front of there it's always fun and then herbie the love bug at the end of the the overpass over there uh, a couple then, other uh, references and stuff yeah. here on top of the buildings and yeah. some halo yeah, yeah, definitely have some of these things. Again, again, there there are little little references that pop up that even sometimes I didn't notice when when stuff was being set up. But but yeah, I, again, I, it's it just makes a, a city more more fun and, and things that different people can relate to for different things. You know, we've got we've got this um, Bauhaus style architecture at the end with bad cops um, hovercraft on top of it. Um, so, yeah, and we even have little things like kudzu, the ever-present kudzu sitting out there on, 
on the sides and kind of some bare spots and the the uh, construction trailer and outhouse some of those those different things um, details to add to a you know what otherwise might be a, f a fairly empty space um, but but yeah it's just it's just those little details that we try to continue to, to incorporate into our into our layouts it's a super fun dynamic layout there's so much going on so do you know how many people in total were involved um, well, there was, between this one and we also have a Moonbase collaboration, there are about 15 contributors from our lug. We've, we've been getting a lot of new interest, and of course, this being, I think, our second show since the pandemic, um, things had shut a lot down. There's a lot of, a lot of interest now in, in people displaying again, and so we are definitely going to have a busy year this year with some of the Lego shows and train shows that we do a lot just to kind of get back up to speed. For, uh, for Peach Lug. And for people who aren't familiar with Peach Lug, talk about kind of what areas you, you all represent and if maybe people in those areas want to get involved, how, how can they do that? Yeah, well, um, Peach Lug, we're definitely centered in Metro Atlanta, but we have, we have members all over the place. We've got some people in North Florida, um, Tennessee, the Carolinas. A lot, just a, a lot of a lot of places and all over the, the state. So we really, we really welcome, welcome all people. And again, we've got, um, if you go to um, info at peachlug.com, and we're... we're we email address so they can reach out. Yeah, yeah, and we do have a, we do have a presence on, on Facebook. So... Um, cool. So yeah, if anyone's in the, in the Atlanta area, the greater Atlanta area, anywhere around there, then reach out because the lugs are fantastic and you meet so many great builders and come to conventions and display together. Uh, it's just a great way to get more involved in the community. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely I've been involved with the with the lug for almost ten years, and it's uh, it's it's just been incredible. It's it's definitely helped me increase some of my build skill and just just have fun with a lot of other builders. And there's so much diversity in what people build and what people come up with, and even just the skill levels. There are some really renowned builders here, and there are some people who are just starting out, and we really kind of. We like to encourage everybody at whatever level they're at not to be intimidated by people who maybe have some incredible things, but that anybody can, can contribute and really, really be a part of things and, and really um, have fun doing it, too. That's the, that's the name of the game. There you go. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to take us through the whole layout here. Keep up the amazing work. Can't wait to see what Peach Lug and you bring to shows in the future. Great. Well, thanks a lot. I love the opportunity to show everybody what we've what we've done as a group.